Hello friends, this video on how do organisms reproduce part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have understood the basics of reproduction, let us look at the different types of reproduction. Now broadly reproduction is classified into two types, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. So these are the two broad categories of reproduction. So first we will talk about asexual reproduction and then we will discuss sexual reproduction. So let us try to understand what are these two types of reproduction in short. What is asexual reproduction? Single parent is needed to produce the new organism. That means you do not need two parents. Like for example in human beings, we need a father as well as a mother to produce a new baby. Right? So that means we need two parents. But in asexual reproduction, we just need one parent to produce the new organism. That means if there is one organism, that single organism is able to give birth to a new organism. That is called asexual reproduction. So that is why in asexual reproduction, there is no sex differentiation of male and female. Unlike human beings. In human beings, we have males and females separate. Why? Because we need one male and one female to reproduce. But in this case, we just need one organism. So there is no distinction of, there is no concept of male female. No sex involved. So what do I mean by no sex involved? That means there is no need of mating between the two different sexes. Because as I said, there is no differentiation of male female here. So obviously when there is no, when only one organism is involved, obviously there is no concept of mating also. Right? Now this asexual reproduction was the primitive mode of reproduction. That means it was, it came before the sexual mode of reproduction. Now in this uh, mode, the daughter is exactly identical to the parents. Now we often use the word daughter for the new organism which is produced. So the new organism which is produced is often called daughter and the organism which gave birth to the new organism is referred as the parent organism. Right? So maybe many a times while teaching I will be using these terms daughter and parents. So take it in this regard. So in asexual reproduction, there is no chance of variation because in this case, only one organism gives birth to the new organism. So whatever this organism has, exactly same thing gets copied. So there is no chance of having some new traits. So the daughter is exactly identical to the parents and there is no scope of variation as such. This asexual reproduction is commonly seen in lower plants and animals. That means mostly it is seen in all unicellular animals like the bacteria, amoeba, uh, paramecium, euglena and also some simple multicellular animals like hydra, planaria, tapeworms. So there also we can see asexual mode of reproduction. We also see it in some plants like rose, potato, onion. So there are a couple of living organisms where asexual reproduction is present. Now there are some organisms who can reproduce both asexually as well as sexually. So they are capable of doing both. A single parent can also produce organism but at the same time they also have male female organisms so that they can mate and they can produce new organism. So on the other hand what is sexual reproduction as the sum as the word itself says that here sex is involved. That means there is sex differentiation. One male, one female. So it involves two parents. Fusion of male and female gametes give rise to the new organism. So here you have a new term called gametes. What are gametes? Gametes are nothing but these are specialized sex cells which are capable of reproduction. So that means they are some, like our body is made up of cells. Now there are some cells which are specialized for reproduction. So that means those cells are only used for reproduction. Like as you know, in our body, the cells are specialized to form tissues. They do a specific function. Again, the tissues together becomes an organ. They do a specific function. 
So similarly, like there are certain cells which are involved in the digestive system. There are certain cells which are involved in the excretory system. So similarly, there are some specialized cells which are involved for reproduction. So these gametes are nothing but they are specialized cells for sex. So here in case of sexual reproduction, a male sex cell and a female sex cell, they both fuse together. That means they both join together to form the new organism. So that means the joining between male and female, that is sex, is involved in this mode of reproduction. So as I said, sex is involved there. So since here, everything happens by the combination of two parents. So the daughter is genetically different from the parents. That means the daughter is not going to be exactly similar to the parents because we have two parents, right? One, so those two parents themselves have different traits, right? So when they both combine to form a new organism, it is quite obvious that the new organism is not going to be exactly similar to any one of them. So the new organism will have traits from both of them and they will also have some new traits. So that means in this case, the organism is going to be genetically different from the traits, parents. Some traits will be similar to either of the parents. There will be some new traits as well and that is called variations. So variations play a role in sexual reproduction. But in case of sexual reproduction, the multiplication rate is slow. It is not very fast when compared to asexual reproduction. So asexual reproduction is a faster mode of reproduction when compared to sexual mode. So this was a brief description of both the modes of reproduction. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.